Hey guys, so there is one more important thing which I want to talk about. Uh, that is how to debug uh, your your errors, right? Which is something uh, very very important. Like writing of code is okay, but how will you solve the errors which you are encountering? Something which is very very important in coding world, and uh, without which you can't just can't survive uh, any coding environment because mostly code is already written and it's not working, and you have to find out why it's not working. Right, so you need to develop this debugging skills, error finding skills, and there are a few things which you need to learn before you can actually start uh, your your progress in how to. That's the only thing, only way by which you can learn uh, how to debug a program. So those are the tools available within the IDE. So without having an IDE, it's difficult to debug it. Now, of course, there will be different ways by which you can do it. The logs are the first point of contact to find out what's what went wrong. But yeah, if you want to interactively debug it, then IDE is what you require. So in this case, the IDE in this case is our Eclipse and it provides the debug mechanism uh, by which you can find out what happened. So in the previous video, which you, if you remember, we have this, uh, we had this, uh, error which was originating actually we you know inserted this error inside our test case right so we added some some gibberish here and it's supposed to be failing because this is something which the framework or method doesn't recognize that it says that this link is uh, the case for this is not present so it is uh, you need to add it so this kind of exception is what i was throwing from the method maybe i'll just run it again to show you that so if i run this so and and, and assume that you don't you're not very sure what happened right so it's just an error which we are trying to reproduce and we are you uh, you know believe that you just don't know what caused this error and now we'll try to uh, you know debug it so now error appeared so first thing you would do is when error comes the so first thing you do is you check the logs right so in the logs you will find a lot of information the various things are happening this is you know this time the the log stack the stack trace is small so stack trace is something where uh, the because in Java one method calls another method and method calls another method so there is this complete chain of uh, methods stacked one after another called one after another and that is what the these logs actually displays right so here it's telling me that first it originated from here so test execution started from here then it went here then it went here so the first method which is being called will always be at the bottom and the last method where the error originated will always come at the at the top right so remember this this is a stack right uh, in this case i can easily see the error is coming here at this line so it is telling you everything it's telling you all the information you need and it's also telling what is kind of error is this so this is something which i originate i created right sometimes you might get null pointer exception which is very very common which usually happen when you are trying to invoke a method on an object which is not being initialized right so that is the root cause of null pointer exception in this case, it's pretty simple. Uh, we have like th these three methods being called and error originated here. So if I click on this, either I can go from this there or I can also call do go from here from failure trace. So if I go from here, I click on this, I navigate to the line at which the error was thrown. So right, as I said in the beginning, believe that you just don't know why this error originated and you're not sure what is, what do you, however, in this case, the message is pretty, pretty clear that description is missing and link description add you have to add link, link description but assume you are very new to it you're not sure what happened what's happening right so now the next step is wherever you are going to get an error you're going to put a breakpoint there what is a breakpoint breakpoint is something when you double click on this line you get a button here right this line breakpoint means when you run it in a debug mode the pointer the execution will halt here and when it halt here, you and we can then investigate. It gives you another tools. Uh, this ID will give you another tool to investigate or find out what was the state of the variables at this particular moment. And that is what I am going to tell you next. Okay. So once I put the breakpoint, so breakpoint you can put anywhere, right? So if you think you can put a breakpoint here and you can get to investigate what happened, that's fine. Else you can also put multiple breakpoints. Right, so you can put breakpoint here. You can put a breakpoint here. So I've already put a breakpoint here. Right, so, so to know what really happened when the error originated, so you can put multiple breakpoints. Now, when multiple breakpoints are inserted, the next step which you need to do is to run this using a debugger, right, or in a debug mode. So if I right click on it, I get usually you go for run as, right. Usually, if you want to debug it, you have to go to debug as. Remember this: if you do a run as and if you have a breakpoint, it will not stop here. 
so you have to right click and you have to run it as a, in a debug mode debug as uh, you see this uh, bug present here so this is a symbol of debugging then i will say debug as junit test so what will happen execution will work as it is and as soon as this line of execution is encountered then the execution will stop and as soon as that happens this pop up will appear that it will say perspective switch now in eclipse here there is a concept of perspective perspective means what kind of tab combinations tabs combination will be present right at particular perspective so right now we were in a java perspective development perspective previously now we want to switch to debug perspective so you have to click on switch as soon as you do a switch there are few more tabs will be open so one tab will be this this is a stack trace it is telling you everything right what thread structure what methods were being called so these all these methods were being called before our actual method was encountered right so our actually uh, what we see is this but before that lot of things happened you see because we are using cucumber framework and it is calling methods after methods after methods so it's listing everything but we are more interested in what what we wrote right so this is what was triggered and this method triggered this method right so this method was from where uh, you know test case got originated and then we reached here right and this is where it is stopping now it's possible that you're not seeing you're seeing variables and breakpoint but you're not seeing expressions which is fine so let's say if you're not seeing this what you have to do is first of all we need to validate what's happening with the variable so what was sent so we can if you hover on it you can say hamburger menu is what is being sent here i can also do a right click and click on add to watch right so i can click on watch and as soon as as soon as you do a watch an expression will come here expression tab will come here and this is something which you can actually use to at run time you can actually use it to write your own expressions okay so in this case let's say i want to see what is the value of this so i can select it copy this i can put it here and place enter it will tell you that is coming as its correct values hamburger menu so this expression is very useful in debugging and, and identifying and running the code at this particular point or i mean you know i can even do this i can even completely copy this and i can put it here and this will get executed okay uh, so this is how this expression works is a very useful tool for you to uh you know validate or for you to check at run time the state of an expression expression can be a variable as well as a method it can be a complete statement of java anything you can run it from here to validate what's happening here you can try you should try this out this is as i said very useful maybe not in this specific case but in general it's very useful feature right now next thing what you're going to do is uh so now i i really for i i know that for text it should go here so i can put a breakpoint here and then i can see i can do few more things i can say okay uh, if i want to just run this so i have multiple options here so step into step over step into is something i want to go inside the method and and stop step over is i want to run the method on which the on which the statement is currently and then once the method execution is completed i want to stop right so step into step over is useful here it's a step f5 it's, it's f6 uh you can also make use of resume resume is something run it again until the next breakpoint is met right i usually use resume a lot but it's not it's not something which you should also do you can rely on step over and step in uh, step over and step into so if i make use of resume i will say okay if i run this from here it should resume to the resume the execution till the next breakpoint is met so i'll write here i'll click on resume now it will step stop here i'll say okay this is working fine this is also working fine the it is related hamburger menu link is present and then i'll resume it again so once i resume it again it will go here i will say what is the value of b right so i can just put an expression here i write b now b value is true that means it will go here so in this iteration because i know that this is being triggered from here right and it is in writing in iteration so i will say okay for the iteration number 1 it's working fine right so maybe this this first iteration is not a problem so i will say okay let's zoom again now it will again being called because as i said it's it's in running an iteration so i will say okay what is the value now now the value is amazon prime logo right so here it's i'm seeing amazon prime logo so i'll say okay resume again so i'll say resume 
what is the value of b value of b is now coming as true that means this trace is also passed so no error is being run is returned for this execution also then i'll say resume again when i do that again then i say the text is xtfm something like this and now i can know what really is the error right so error was getting originated from here and since the text is here and there is no case design defined for this specific text and that's the reason it is failing and now i know what went wrong right so if i do a resume it will just directly reach here so now i know okay since this text was not present here that's the reason and then i can discuss with the team people whether this is right this is wrong and i now clearly know what is the error right and this is how basically you actually debug your program 